Hi everyone, thanks for watching. I'm Lauren from Guthrie and Ganny and in this video I'm going to be sharing with you the live recording of my sewing, dressmaking, fabric themed question and answer session that I did live on the Instagram platform on Monday the 1st of May. So I'm going to be answering questions that you have sent in beforehand and chatting about tips and advice that you might need for your projects. And then also got lots of really lovely, inspiring fabric and pattern combinations as well. So I've got loads of beautiful fabrics out from around the shop to chat through them and hopefully give you lots of ideas for new spring and summer sewing projects. So if you're watching this on YouTube and you would like me to answer your question in a future session, then do leave a comment below or you can always email the shop as well. I'll put the contact details in the description to this video or you can ask me over on the Instagram platform as well. You'll see me just reading through the comments and questions as they're coming in live as well just so you've got a little bit of context to what I'm chatting about and if you have previously asked a question that, and you're wanting to check whether I've covered it or not I've added timestamp chapters to this video so you can just scroll down or look in the description and you'll see the timing of when I answer all the individual questions that have been sent in beforehand. So I hope you enjoy I'm going to switch over to the live recording now and I'll see you very shortly. Hi hi hi. So I've got various questions to get through tonight which I'm sure you'll all find very useful and lots of fabrics to show you as well so yeah lots of inspiration coming up hopefully if you've been feeling in a little bit of a low sojo then hopefully this will give you some inspiration um, and yeah there might be some questions where I know that you guys are going to have some good answers as well so any input is always greatly appreciated as always. More brains are better than one, as they say. So, I do have a couple of new things to show you, not loads. Um, I would probably say like the main bulk of all our spring summer stuff has kind of come. Um, but we are waiting on lots of replen of stock to come in. So if, you, if there's anything you've been waiting for, I think over the next couple of weeks, lots of things are going to come back into stock. Um, we also as of the weekend, have got the last little bit of Chica Cheetah French Terry, organic cotton French Terry in the navy and the sky blue back in stock. But this is it guys, like we've got, we've sort of sorted out all the kit after, the, uh, all the stock after the kits. Um, and this is like the last bit that's left. We don't have any more after this. So if you did fancy some, then yeah. Um, somebody saying they're wearing their Chica Chita Jarrah today and got so many compliments. Well, that's lovely. Um, hi, 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 everyone. Who's reading all of your hellos? Hello. Um, so, so yeah, that is that is live on the website. Um, I've been to see Anna Voyage this afternoon and wore my next blouse in the same fabric that you're wearing. Snap. Um, that's great. Okay, so the other new things that have that you might have seen pop up on the website, we've we actually we got the um, some of the more popular fabric godmother fabrics back in stock, and um, so this strawberry one, which sold out really quickly before, it's back again. It's the strawberry fair viscose linen, so it's fifty five linen, forty five viscose, and um, and it's really lovely. Got these really cute little nice summer strawberries on it. And I've been seeing lots of lovely garments made up in this. Um, I would say because it's, you know, it's, it's almost like 50-50. It's not kind of like swishy and as fluid as something that would have a higher composition of viscose. It's got like a little bit more structure, but obviously still quite lightweight. So it just it makes it really versatile. I've seen loads of really nice little blouses and tops in that. So yeah, that is back in stock. And then we did have a couple of Fabric Godmother prints that we've not had before. Um, this one is the viscose crepe. Um, it is the Celine viscose crepe, 1650 a meter. So viscose crepe is just where it's, it's probably like feel, maybe might feel a little bit thicker than a plain weave viscose or a viscose lawn, which tends to be quite a smooth surface. This has just got a little bit more of a textured surface and feels a little bit um, physically thicker, but still drapes in the same way. So, and it's, I definitely don't think you need to line that. So it does make it really versatile. You can see it's still really bouncy and really swishy. So it's still gonna be good for loads of different things. 
um, and then another viscose linen. I'm pretty sure this will be the same combination. Yeah, it's 55 linen and 45 viscose. Um, more sort of vintagey vibes here. This is the Gertie floral linen. Um, and I've seen some really cute little dresses and tops in this as well. So another really lovely one for summer. Um, I'm going to be a grandma in June for the first time. Would be grateful for kids stuff. Good to know. Um, I would generally say that usually Jersey stuff is quite popular for kids things. So if you're if you're new to Jersey, that might be something to sort of look into. Um, the other new thing we've had, which one's just fallen on the floor off, um, are these fold over elastics with a little scalloped edge. So we do have some really nice colours just back in stock of them. And we've also got a white and a black and a navy too, if you want something a little bit more classic and um, really good for using up your jersey scraps you want to make some some briefs or some knickers so the way they work is that see how they sort of open up like this you kind of shove the fabric in and then do that and then you would um you, know, you need to sew it on with a stretch stitch probably with a zigzag and then they've just got a really cute little scalloped edge and little sort of um, dots woven into it so they're quite cute and um, so yeah we restocked on those ones and then the other new thing that we've got on in the just arrived section as well is the new friday pattern company donny shirt so we've got it as a pdf but you can order it with the pdf and the printouts as well directly from our website and um, and it's I've, I've seen lots of versions popping up on this as well i think it's going to be really popular so it's like a cute little cute little blouse cute little shirt but you've not got the buttons down the front it's just a center seam um, and really lovely for summer you know would work in loads of different fabrics somebody actually asked a question to say that they would like to make it in a white or off-white plain fabric can you show some options we do usually have a serona linen that is i think we've got i can't remember what it's called whether it's like cream or off-white very blurred line in that region spectrum of colors white off-white you know slightly cream i don't know ivory <laughs> they all blur a lot um but we do usually have that in the serona linen but i couldn't find it in the shelves so i suspect we're waiting for more to get in stock but it's that's usually something that we stock anyway but the things that i did spot that are more sort of white or off-white which i think would be quite cute for it there's this one here which is the off-white Dobe grid cotton voile fabric. So you can see that it's got this sort of grid woven into it, which is quite nice. So it's plain, but then it's got a little bit more texture. And then this is the off-white lightweight woven check cotton fabric. So it's got a sort of stripe. Actually, it's not a stripe, it's more like a check. Can you see? It's really sort of lightweight. So it might be that you feel like maybe you would want like a vest top underneath that or something, because it's maybe like a little bit more sheer, but I think it would work really nicely in that one. Um, a lot of people liking the Fabric Godmother prints. Snap. Um, so yeah, a few options there. The other thing that I think would be good for the Donny shirt is the yarn dyed linens that I was showing you last week. This is one of the colors here. This is the jade one. They're 100% linen and they're 2390 a meter. They're more lighter weight um, linen, so better for tops and blouses and dresses and that sort of thing, but perfect for for that pattern and then i also think it would work nicely in a double gauze as well and um, that was a sort of two-tone double gauze that i pulled out but we do have some other nice ones as well and um, this is the merlot melange cotton double gauze and um, so it's woven with a sort of kind of like a gray bluey thread and then kind of like a sort of winey colored thread so it gives it a lot of texture it's really nice and um, so i think that i, I think the, the double gauze would also work for the Johnny. So and I, th I think it's one of those patterns that you would probably find your, you make again and again because it's like fairly simple and just very versatile across different types of fabric. Ones that have got more structure and ones that are maybe a little bit more floppy. Like I think it would also be nice in a viscose linen or even just a woven viscose as well. You know, it's going to sort of float and drape a little bit more. It's got that gathered bit at the back yoke. So that would look really nice in just a, a plain woven viscose, you know, like this, this sort of weight. Um, I've ordered some of the jade linen for my Donny. Great minds, hey? Um, that'll be lovely. Um, okay, so the other things that I wanted to, that are on my list to chat to you about before I get into the questions and things that have been sent in beforehand is if you missed the little update in the Sewing Society newsletter that went out last week, we've not got a new kit release for May. Um, so although when this Wednesday coming is the first Wednesday of May, there won't be a brand new kit um, to, to offer you this month. 
Um, that wasn't the original plan, I'll be honest. There was originally a plan to have two new kits in May. But basically, after we launched the, the birthday kits in April and all of the fabric and everything, we just didn't really like realise how, how busy it would be after that. Um, and like the whole team were just working flat out to like try to try and get on top of all of that. And there just wasn't going to be enough time to get everything together, to get the kits out for me. And we also thought that because everybody really seemed to like the fabric and seemed to buy a lot of it, that maybe you'd want some time to sew up without having something else new coming in straight away. Um, but you're not missing out on anything because normally we would have a break in August. Um, so there wouldn't be any sewing society kits in August, but we've just like shimmied things around a little bit and we're still going to have all of the kits that we had planned to have, but just in a slightly different order. Um, so yeah, they'll be in June, July and August instead, rather than May, June, July. Um, so, so yeah, but I will send a, send a little update on Wednesday anyway, just because it might be that you feel like you want to have a little update at 12 o'clock on, on the first Wednesday of the month, because we always send that out. Um, okay, somebody's asking, is the Donny more a boxy shape? I would, I would say it is because it doesn't have any bust starts. It's just sort of like straight down at the side. So it's not, it is more sort of boxy and loose, yeah. Um, and then somebody also asked in relation to the sewing society kits, will you be doing a shorts kit? So we normally, if we if we're going to have shorts, they would be part of a pattern that um, also had a trouser option as well. Um, so we we probably wouldn't do one that was like just for shorts. It would be the the pat you know that it would be a pattern for trousers, and within that pattern there would be a shorts variation. So. I don't know, potentially that might be coming up over the summer, not giving anything away and all that. Um, okay, Carol saying, you all work so hard for the birthday celebrations, you deserve a bit of a quieter time. Thank you. I wish it was quieter. It doesn't feel quiet, um, which is obviously good. You know, it's good to be busy and it means that, um, you know, everything's sustainable. But um, yeah, I think it would have just, I think it might have like pushed me over the edge to, <laughs> to do another kit. Um, especially with three weeks of Easter holidays, but you don't want to hear my some my holiday woes. Anyway, um, okay, so I had a few points of feedback that were shared as comments on the recording that I put on my YouTube channel. Um, so because last week somebody had asked about a pattern for quite a fitted top that had like almost like a little kind of exposed bit here. So it was almost like there was a panel on the top and then a panel at the bottom and then there was like a sort of exposed bit across here. Um, so a few suggestions on, on that front. There is a top by Vicky Sews called the Terry Knit Top with an opening across the front. Pattern Emporium Flossom Top and Dress has an opening across the front like you're describing. It's a PDF pattern, their patterns all come with great instructions. And then a few people suggested the Deer and Doe Orage, O-R-A-G-E, G-E, I'm probably not pronouncing that right apologies, has an opening across the bodice. It could be adapted. And I think I have seen one at Pattern Emporium as well. So yeah, a couple of people spotting the Pattern Emporium one. Um, so yeah, a few places to try there for that style of top. And then also, yeah, I think we were, to, we were talking a little bit last week about lining something. And I think it was in context with the, um, with the embroidery on glaze fabric, the eyelet one that's got the embroidered bits in it, so it's like kind of got holes and then therefore makes it a bit see-through and the best way to line that. Somebody's suggestion was best solution for sheer fabrics is an Ogden cami in a neutral or matching colours. It's much easier than lining your tops. So suggestion there, don't need to worry about lining, just wear another layer underneath, which yeah, maybe makes it more versatile because you'd wear that layer underneath with various different things. If you have got various different sheer fabrics, then you're not having to line everything. Um, you're sort of taking the lining with you in the form of a vest top to every outfit you go to. Um, okay, somebody's asking, would the next blouse work in Liberty Tan Lawn or does it need something more fluid, please? I think it would work in lawn. It would just hold its shape a little bit fuller. So you can see here, you know, the, the sleeve is, I wouldn't say it's like really full, but it is gathered at the sleeve because, you know, it's got the elastic. Um, so it might just like hold that puff shape a little bit more. Obviously it's got the gathering at the back as well. So I think it would probably just, like maybe sort of just feel, you know, it wouldn't like swish around as much, but I think it would still work. I think it would still be okay. Um, I like to make a little 
flippy summer skirt out of viscose above knee swishing from the hips is there such a pattern do you think and um, somebody suggesting the sew over at Haxby worth checking out and um, oh nice that was my question thanks for all the pattern suggestions no probs just finished my Agnes PJs OMG I love them that's great excellent um, okay so the next question was so a few on fitting now I'm five foot tall with very narrow shoulders and a very large bust. I always need to shorten from the shoulder to the underarm on the patterns. Is there a way of working out how much to reduce this by before making a twelve? If I could do this on the pattern before the twelve, it would make life so much easier. Thank you in advance. I think what you could try and do, Debbie, it was Debbie that sent that in, is if you know your measurement like from from here you know like the top of your shoulder to the apex of your bust like if you know what that measurement is on you when you're wearing the underwear that you're going to be wearing when you wear the garment and then you would be able to mark the apex of the bust on your pattern and then compare that measurement and then that might give you an indication on where you need to shorten it by um, obviously take into account of the seam allowance on your pattern as well for your shoulder seam. Um, or the other thing that you could do is try to almost like tissue fit it. So you could put the pattern, just like ho try and hold the pattern onto your body and then you might be able to sort of see if you could do it that way as well. Um, so, so yeah, hopefully that gives you something to sort of work with. Um, any recommendation for fluid white-ish summer dress fabric and pattern i need some shape and um, we've actually just put an order in for some of our smooth drape tensile twill more colors of that to come and we did order a white in that it's either a white or an off-white and um, so that should be coming in soon and that i think that would be a good weight if you wanted that that sort of dress um and then yeah I need some shape. Oh, I'm thinking a pattern off the top of my head. My brain doesn't, can't really think that quickly anymore. I guess some you need something with a, with like a waist seam where you could kind of pull it in. Um, I was just looking at the True by Shelby. It's got a waistline seam. You maybe have some ties at the back to give you some shape. That would be nice. Are you expecting more viscose linen? We are. It's due to it's due to come tomorrow actually. So depending on what time it comes will depend on whether it gets put on the system tomorrow or on Wednesday. Um, but it's starting to be quite limited in colours because the supplier that we get the specific plain viscose linen we've been getting it from, they're not going to be doing that range anymore. And the other viscose linens that I've been looking at from other suppliers aren't quite exactly the same. Um, so which is a bit of a shame. It's like going to be like a little bit of a gap that I'm still trying to solve. But yeah, more is on the way. Um, OK, I did wonder. Next dress. Thank you. OK, great. Um, OK, so the next question sent in advance was about the Durban jumpsuit. I've been putting it off because of fitting issues. Whenever I make bottoms like shorts or joggers or PJs, I always do a 1.5 centimetre low seat adjustment. For the Durban, it tells you to measure all the way down the front and then up the back and measure one centimetre longer than the finished garment measurement. And then it says to have at least four oh, I measure one centimetre longer than the finished garment measurement, but then it says that it says to have at least four centimetres of ease. However, if I just increase by five centimetres, I'll feel like I have too much room at the front as some of that increase in length is to accommodate my low bum. Do I do my usual 1.5 low seat adjustment and then maybe length front and back by 1.5 centimetres each to give a total of 4.5 centimetres extra length? I I feel like yes, because if you feel like the the you know the length of this curve, you know that it's it's thinking about where like the distribution of where you need the space is, and yeah, if you need it more in this region, then I would suggest adding adding on there as you normally do, and then lengthening the whole thing. The thing you need to remember with a jumpsuit is you need to be able to get it on and off, and you need to be able to like bend down, and you need to be able to sit down. So that's why you need that extra ease. Whereas obviously, if you've got 
trousers or shorts on then they can kind of just move up and you know you've got a little bit more wriggle room because they can just move on your body a little bit more but when that seam is connected to your shoulders then obviously you know you need like a little bit more given there to be able to move around so i would say what you've suggested would make sense because you're adding to, you're adding to the front and the back which i think you need to be able to move up and down but you're adding more to the back which it sounds like from what you've described you need because of your your you know your body proportions um so so yeah i think that i think that sounds i think that sounds good reasonable what you've said obviously you're not totally going to know until you try it you just need to try something but i think the theory of it sounds like it's going to work um okay so the next question was another sort of pattern adaption one i've slashed and spread a sleeve previously to add more puff but i wondered whether you can slash and shrink sleeves to reduce the puff i am trying to work out if i can make a slightly less full sleeve version of the anna allen anthea blouse yes you can um definitely i would just do it in the, in the same sort of way I also wanted to make the Anna Allen Anthea, but I felt like the sleeves might be too puffed for me. And in the end, what I did was I used the Fibre Mood Norma blouse, but I changed the shape of the neckline. And then I used the sleeves, which looked like a little bit less puffy than the Anthea. So I tried to recreate the Anthea through another means. But I think, yeah, I th I, in theory, yeah, I think it should be fine if you did that. Um, okay, the next one. Okay, so some of you might have input in here. So get ready with your answers. My question is about irons. What iron do you use? Do you have a steam generator for your sewing work? Do you use a separate iron to put on interfacing or your normal one? So I, since I've had the shop and the studio for the workshops and everything, I've always had Philips irons. I can't actually really tell you why. Um, I just always have had them. Um, and they, they generally have been quite good. I think we've got one of the original irons left that I bought when I started the shop 10 years ago. So, you know, that's lasted quite a while. Um, and this and yeah, it's the Philips Azure models that I've used. Well, they do have various Azure, A Z U R. Um, so so we have so we've got them in the studio here. Um, I have had to replace a couple of them, and then I just had the same one at home. But then I had one, and it didn't really last very long. It kept shorting the you know it kept like making the fuse go off at home so i ended up having to get another one and i actually don't totally love the steam on it i feel like i've had other irons that have been better my mum has a steam a steam generator one and um, i can't actually remember what brand that is though maybe it's a tea file um, and I actually quite like it when I go to her house. I feel like the steam is quite powerful and it's quite good I do find it quite hard to control the amount of steam though it's not got the her, her steam generator one's got more like buttons that you press as opposed to like a dial or like a kind of slider for how much steam you get so i find it i find it's got quite a lot of steam which is like good in some situations but you don't want quite as much steam i haven't really worked out how to do that on her iron um but i would say it does give really good steam and um, the steam generator ones but yeah i'm sure you guys have got various experience of irons so i'm hoping that some people um share what they find is good on on the slashing sleeve topic it is pretty easy to slash and reduce the sleeves i did this on the sagebrush top good to know phillips azure iron for me too i have the phillips too they heat up quickly versus some other brands i absolutely love your fabric you're wearing can you think of a sewing pattern for beginners to make a blouse um you could that you could let me start again, sorry. Um, the Tilling the Button Stevie is really easy. I think it's really easy for beginners because it doesn't have any fastenings or anything. And I think it would work in this. It would be nice. It's quite boxy, but because the fabric's really lightweight, I think it would I think it would like look really nice. Hello, can I just check which linen fabric you were just talking about? Was it the Serona viscose linen that you are going to be able to get more of? That you aren't going to be able to get more of? No, the Serona one's okay. It's the it's the viscose linen that's the plain range and it's the one where there's more viscose than linen. I think it's maybe about 70% um, viscose and 30% linen. That's the one that I get, more's coming, but then it's I'm like starting to run out of stuff that I've ordered before. Um, I have a regular iron with good steam, have the tiny prim iron, which is ace for seams, hems and interfacing. 
I splashed out on a Norris, oh, I splashed out on a Norris steam generator iron after volunteering at a couture company during lockdown, game changer. That sounds really good. Um, I have an iron that turns off after five minutes, great for sewing. I want to do that. I keep trying to work out the easiest way to do it. Have you got the Midnight Blossom Cotton Poplin? I have ordered some, but is it okay to show me? I don't have it like in close hand just now. I'm sorry. If you send me a direct message, I could um I could send you like a little video afterwards. I have a steam generator iron, superb ironing, but weighs an absolute ton. I also agree the mini prim ones are amazing, so useful for fiddly areas. I have a T-file steam generator for the household ironing, but a normal Phillips steam iron for my sewing room. What is the fabric called on what you are wearing? To have a look on your website, Be Happy Blooms. If you search B as in a bumblebee. Happy Blooms on the website, you'll find it in all the colourways. I have a steam generator for my normal ironing, but a separate steam iron in my sewing room. The mini prim sounds interesting though. Okay, thank you for your input. Um, hopefully that helps. Um, okay, the next one was tips and recommendations for a first stretch fabric project. Um, the Tilly and the Buttons ones are good because their instructions are quite in depth. So the Agnes is like an individual pattern that you can get or the, then there's the stretch book that's got various different stretch projects in it. Obviously goes into a little bit more depth. I think when you're sewing with stretch for the first time, a cotton jersey is really good. I brought a couple over to show you. Um, we do have lots of just plain cotton jerseys, like plain colours and some patterned ones as well. That's a nice pink one with sort of like sketchy patterns on it and um, that's the artist crosshatch on pink cotton jersey 1780 and then we've also got this one here which comes in various different colors as well this is the dashed lines on mustard cotton jersey it's 1410 a meter cotton jersey is just a little bit easier to work with because it tends to be more stable compared to a tensile or a medal or a viscose jersey and um, or you could also go for, I, I didn't bring it over actually, but the Tilly and the Buttons Billy sweatshirt is a nice sweatshirt one and a French cotton French terry or um, our cosy colour range like fleece back sweatshirting um, would, would be nice and easy to work with as well. It's a good first stretch project, but obviously getting into the summer, maybe you're not going to be into um, sweatshirts as much, which is why I suggested the t-shirt. Um, okay, a few, I have six, about six things I want to make with the Serona. Yeah, if, if it's Serona, you're okay, Kathy. Um, Billy sweatshirt was my first stretch, super easy and cotton jersey and makes a nice top too. Okay, good, good recommendation there. Okay, the next one was, do you know of any charities I can donate unwanted fabric and patterns to? So I think you might be watching, Melanie. Um, I have donated some fabrics to um, a project that Melanie does that where she helps refugees. Um, and does like a sort of sewing sewing sessions with them. Um, Melanie, if you're watching and um, anybody has got any fabric or patterns that they want to um, donate to your group, then maybe you could let us know the details. Um, Cause I've, um, yeah, yeah, you are watching Melanie. Um, so yeah, maybe you could like put some details of maybe the best way that people could contact you or something or send you a message um, and then I can read that out. Um, a tip, if you get any of the sticky stuff on the iron plate from interfacing, rub it off with a paracetamol tablet. Iron plate has to be hot when doing it. Yeah, that's a good tip. It's so funny you should say that because I actually filmed a reel to do to showing people how to do that last week. I just haven't edited it yet. Um, yeah, because I didn't, actually didn't answer that part of the question. I don't have a separate an iron for interfacing and I but I do now after being lazy in the past and not using a pressing cloth I do always now use a pressing cloth and I put interfacing on um okay do you sell the tilling the buttons or have you one of your own yeah we um we sell the tilling the buttons ones yeah um Okay, do you ever stock an embroidered cotton jersey? I'd like to make some t-shirts and something embroidered, but there's a t-shirt weight. Mm, I don't really see that. I wonder if maybe you could just embroider some yourself with some, there's going to be like loads of really fun um, little videos and tutorials and stuff you could see about putting your own embroidery on. I have loads of unwanted patterns. I donated my scraps of fabric to my local primary school. Is the Adrian blouse easy to sew? Well, it'd be great for beginners. It depends what you mean by beginners. I wouldn't say like complete beginners, maybe more like confident beginners. 
I sorted out dozens of patterns that I won't make only yesterday. Thanks so much. You can contact me on my Instagram. Search for me under my name, Melanie Keen, and then message me. Um, okay, so if you message Melanie Keen, she will tell you how to how you can send your unwanted fabrics and patterns to good cause. Probably a silly question. Does a pressing cloth need to be any any material in particular? Um, I would say cotton. Um, I would use either, I've just used like whatever kind of off cuts I've got. I've used cotton lawn before, like more like a medium weight cotton. Um, I've used double gauze. Um, so calico, you could use that as well. So I would, as long as it's like a natural fibre, I would say it should be fine. Interfacing on iron, I just drag it across the edge of the ironing board until it comes off, leaves a few marks, but I don't mind that. Um, yeah, I have also done that before as well. Okay, at, on the topic of interfacing, um, a few questions about interfacing. Best fusible interfacing for different types of fabric and can you name specific types of interfacing that are your favourites for dressmaking? So I do have, it's a few years old now, but it's still relevant. If you just search guide to interfacings on the website, it, there's search results that will come up for the blog. And I did a blog that's like guide to interfacings for dressmaking. So it'll like give you a lot of context and explain all about the different types of interfacings they are. I would say I probably mostly use the ultra soft lightweight interfacing, but that tends to be because I often sew with lighter weight fabrics. Um, and I do sometimes use the stretch interfacing as well. I have used that on lightweight fabrics as well, um, like a viscose. The, the stretch interfacing is good on a viscose fabric where you still want the fabric to drape quite a lot, but just have like a little bit more stability. Whereas the, the non-woven lightweight interfacing is good for lighter weight fabrics like a viscose, like this one, but where you wanted to just hold its shape a little bit more. So for example, you know, this is like quite a crisp sort of V-neck. You want it to kind of hold like a crisp edge here. You don't necessarily want it to like flop and drape too much at the neckline here, which is why I wanted to use the, the ultra soft, lightweight, non-woven non interfacing <laughs> in this one. Whereas something where you just, I don't know, you just, I can't really think of an example now, sorry, but just where you want like a bit, little bit more swish, but you still need the fabric to have, have a little bit of support, then the, the stretch interfacing is good for that. Um, I use baking paper to protect my iron and the ironing board cover, good one. I also use, I use an old tea towel for a pressing cloth and an organza cloth if I need to see the project. So that's a good, a good tip if you want to see it. If you want to see the fabric you're pressing, organza cloth is useful. Okay, a few, a few um, things on the organza there. I love your woven interfacings, stick so well. I always had issues getting non-woven to stick. I also, I'm not going to, again, I'm sorry, I'm not going to be able to pronounce this right because I think they feel like they've changed their name. The Violin Interfacing, which is not, I don't know, they changed the spelling and it's like quite, it's like a variation of that one now. I tend to just stick with that brand. I don't know, I just find it like good and like reliable. Um, so I don't know, it might be maybe if you've not used like that brand of interfacing before and it's maybe more of like a budget brand, it doesn't fuse quite as good. Um, sorry I came in late, no worries. I love your top, you look gorgeous, thank you. Um, could I ask which pattern and is it a beginner friendly please? It's the Closet Core NYX top, um, which does also come as a dress. I, I would probably, it depends what you're defining as a beginner. It is like a little bit fiddly. So I would say, you know, more like confident beginner pushing to intermediate. Um, I, I would rate it at, but yeah, everybody's own interpretation of that's different. Okay, the next one, gosh, we're like flying through the time tonight. Do you think it would be possible to make the Friday Pattern Company patina blouse without a collar? Yes, is my answer to that, because it's got a facing. So you could just like omit the collar and just put the facing on. I think it would be fine. Um, okay, so now we're on to the section of matching up some patterns and fabrics. Um, so I'll try and whiz through them and hopefully if you, you, you know, I get to answer your question. Okay, the first one is I have 2.5 metres of 100 and... Okay, sorry, I don't really have... I can't work out what the measurements are. I have a flowery seersucker fabric, a bit retro style. I would really appreciate recommendations for patterns. I was thinking a summer dress, but I feel that seersucker needs a certain style of pattern as it's fairly rigid. 
Thank you for your help in advance. So my suggestions for this one were, um, I would say seersucker, I wouldn't say it's like rigid, but it does, it is gonna be like a little bit more structured. Um, some more like a kind of straighter shift dress would work nicely as an example the merchant and mills camber which is just like a really simple little straight shift dress with some bust shaping cute little yoke at the back so it's like a really nice simple one and um, this has got like a little bit more definite definition in it i think this version would work nice in a seersucker it's obviously got a bit more shaping um, at the waist you know it's got the darts at the back as well and a cute little detail there so you know something like that I think would work nice as well um, so a few suggestions there um, okay somebody's asking did you have to size down for the closet core next I sized down two sizes from my what my body measurements came up as but I did um, do then do a slightly smaller seam allowance of a centimeter just putting the sleeves in so I had a little bit more ease across the back yoke um, but yeah I did size down okay the next one was you showed a matte blush cotton stretch on Monday evening would it be suitable to make capri pants slash trousers um, so that was this one here this matte blush um, fabric which does come in other colorways as well we're wait again this is another one we're waiting for more stock to come in it is, has been ordered it's, we're just waiting for it to arrive so it's the matte blush pink stretch cotton fabric 96 cotton four percent lycra it's 13.50 a meter and um, and yes i think it would be really nice for capri pants something classic like closet core sashes would be nice for that and um, and then also part of that question was do you have any stretch denim stripe i don't have any stretch denim stripe i do have this which isn't denim but it's quite quite a you know like a more weightier sort of cotton twill fabric has got when you look closely you can see it's got the twill weave which is quite classic of denim and um, this is the pink pinstripe cotton twill fabric 100 percent cotton and it's 1360 a meter so it's non-stretch you need to obviously make sure that you then had a pattern that had non-stretch in it but i think that would make really nice trousers nice and summery as well so the stripes are going vertically up and down like that and um, okay the next one is Okay, again, I'm open to hear your suggestions here because I know you've always got good suggestions on the topic of this because I've asked you before. A couple of questions that were both in the same vein. Could you share some pattern suggestions for smart casual? I started a new job and this is the dress code and I don't exactly understand what smart casual is. And then also someone else also asked patterns for waiting to work. I work in an office. So I would say smart casual for me anyway, I feel like everybody's probably got slightly like their own interpretation. Like really, really smart would be, you know, like a, like a suit, like matching smart, you know, like smart slick trousers and like a blazer, maybe that matched as in it was like a suit with like a really, you know, crisp shirt on underneath or something. Um, or, maybe like you know the same like a matching jacket and skirt that was like really smart <laughs> I don't know I don't know if I'm describing that or not that would be like really smart for me and then obviously super casual is gonna be like jeans and a jumper or something so you're kind of like somewhere in the middle of that spectrum I would say smart casual for me is because sometimes I try to like you know if, if it's like a weekday and maybe I've got some meetings with suppliers and I just want to get my head into like being quite like a little bit more sort of like work mode and serious then I try to dress smart casual and um, so I might wear something like closet core sasha trousers with a little shirt or a blouse or a nice top I think the Mitchell trousers could also work really nicely I did bring these patterns over and now I can find them um yeah I don't, sorry I don't know where to put them yeah the, I think the Mitchell trousers would look nice as well it's just like a little a little you know shirt or blouse and um, something like the the avid seamstress the blouse that's quite i would say that's quite smart casual and um, the assembly line puff shirt the chalk and notch wren they're all quite cute little sort of tops and blouses dresses wise i have got a telly in the buttons indigo that i made using an atelier brunette viscose and that, that feels quite smart for me smart casual you know it's not like really smart but i wear it with like leggings and you know i, th I feel it like a little bit more dressed up than wearing like jeans and a jumper um, I th maybe the lighter dress might fit into that category as well so but i know that a lot of you are gonna 
probably dress like that for work. So I'm sure you've got lots of good suggestions of what you actually wear. Um, somebody asked, would the pink stripe fabric be okay for the saguaro? No, I don't think it would, it's too thick. Sorry, it's got too much structure in it. The Pietra pants, my go-to smart casual. Yeah, I've actually had that pattern out <laughs> in answer to another question. That's the Pietras there. Um, patina blouse is good for smart casual. I live in my true bias. Emerson's for work with a boxy blouse, smart PJs. Eve trousers and normal blouse for work. Classic trousers and the next blouse you are wearing. Also smart jeans. To me, in a work context, smart casual equals not jeans. Trousers, shirt, a jacket sometimes, patina blouse and Mitchell, Nina Lee portobello trousers and a nice top. I wear Sasha trousers and blur blouses to work a lot. Closet core Sasha trousers are amazing for work. I wear mine with the Avid Seamstress blouse. I also love the Deer and my OCT dress. So over at Kitty dress, so over at Have a Lovely tops for work freya blouse is lovely so over it have a lot of work friendly dresses and um, they do also have the the work to so over it also have that work to weekends ebook as well so that's going to have some like sort of more sm smarter clothes in it too hopefully that gives you lots of inspiration um okay so then yeah on the topic of the pietras somebody was asking fabric for that so i think you could go in two different directions here you could either go for something that's going to be a bit more floppy and fluted. I have actually made the Pietras in the smooth drape tensil twill before, which is really nice. Comes in lots of different colours. This is the dark navy. So this is going to give you a pair of trousers that just, they're like a little, going to move a little bit more. They're going to be a bit more floppy. So you can see that that's quite sort of floppy and swishy there. Also fitting into that category is the bamboo blended fabric. This is really good. Nice for smart trousers as well. I think this would work for the Closet Core Mitchell too. This also also comes in lots of different colours. It's the silver grey bamboo blended twill fabric. This also doesn't crease um, and it's 24.50 a metre. Or you could go, you could make the Pietras in something that's a bit more casual. Helen, who works in the shop, has made the Pietras in the Rami fabric and they look really nice. They have a bit more of like a summery vibe to them. Maybe a little bit more casual than something that's a bit smarter like those other fabrics. So, um, so yeah, hopefully a few ideas there. I've made the Pietra in your Rami fabric and I love them. Um, sorry, what is that black fabric? It was a dark, it's actually dark navy it's the smooth the meat milk smooth drape tensile twill this one and um, but it does also come in a black as well if you did actually want the black um okay somebody's on the somebody's saying i wear a lot of shirt dresses for work excellent thank you okay the next one was fabric for the fiber mood judy dress please i think this was in their recent um issue 22 of their magazine it's quite full dress and it's got quite a high empire line and then gathered and I think you can maybe have shorter sleeves or longer sleeves as well. So from looking at the modelled pictures, it looks like they have made it up. They've made up one version and something like this, which is, this is the, where's the tag gone? The, the Coral Abstract Jacquard Cotton Linen Fabric, 75 cotton, 25 linen. So it's more of like a medium, like lighter to medium weight fabric, I would say. So it's going to hold that fullness and that shape and structure a little bit more. So it depends kind of what you want the sort of aesthetic of the dress to be like, because it is very loose and it is very puffy and full. So then if you want it to sort of hold that shape, going for something that does have a little bit more structure will kind of maintain that. So yeah, something like this, you know, this cotton linen is going to do that. And um, then the other, what else did I say? The double, the double gauze, that's another version that they've made it up in. Um, the, we, let me start again. The photograph of that is in a black sort of gridded double gauze and we've got the kind of beigey color way of it. I'm sorry, I don't have any of it to show you. That's not very helpful. Um, forget I said that. <laughs> then, the, then the other thing that you could do with that dress is instead use a viscose, like a woven viscose like this one. And then it means that the dress is going to sort of hang and flop and swish around a little bit more. So it probably won't feel as kind of full and puffy when you wear it because the fabric will drape a little bit more. Um, you could make a really summery version in something like this. This has been really popular in the summer. It's the Regatta Blue Speckled Leopard Viscose Fabric. Um, and it's a plain weave viscose, so it's nice smooth finish and it is gonna drape and drape and move around a lot and just, yeah, just like swish around a lot. You can see it's very light and floppy. So, 
So, so yeah, I think you could either go for more structured with the with the cottons and the linens, or go for more floppy, um, with the viscoses. Okay, the next question was, I loved your soft shell baby jacket video. That's one that I made years ago. It must have been like six years ago because it was when Sophia was a baby and she's just turned seven um, but I can't find the pattern can you recommend one the pattern I used I think was a company that don't exist anymore um, but it was just like a little sort of simple jacket with a hood on it basically um, a couple that I could find that looked sort of similar the Poppy and Jazz Honeydew hoodie it does have a double breasted thing but maybe you could just not have it double breasted and kind of cut it down a little bit or the Waves and Wild Woodland Wanderer coat also looked quite similar. Um, the next question was, would the indigo combed cotton chambray be good for a Zadie jumpsuit? And that is this fabric here, just like a classic sort of lightweight denim fabric. I think it would be good for that. Yeah, I think it would be nice. So yes, is my answer to that. And then would the aqua fine stripe jersey work for the real ring ringer and what would be a good neckband for it? So I've pulled out this combination here, which I think works really nicely. So this is the Dusty Aqua Fine Stripe Cotton Jersey Fabric. 92 cotton, 8% elastic, 1560 a meter. So it's got this really fine stripe on it here. And I think that this looks really nice with it as well. So obviously a bit more of a contrast, but I think that's that's kind of the style with the, the real ringer. This is the off-white organic cotton tubular ribbing fabric and it's 1040 a meter. So yeah, that combination I think is working really nicely. And then the next one was the that beautiful white embroidery ongle fabric. Any suggestions for patterns for a beach cover up? Um, so that is, oh, I've got a fabric that's really floppy here and it's about to fall down. Um, so that was this one here, um, which is the Ivory Islet Fans Cotton Fabric. It's 100% cotton, it's 1740 a meter. And we do also have it in white as well. Um, and you can see the border here. Now on the topic of this kind of fabric, um, I noticed a couple of pictures on Instagram this week where Kate um, was, Kate and Wills had posted some pictures of them looking nice and happy in like a garden or something. And she's got a white blouse on that is made out of broidery anglais fabric. And it lo the blouse looks, the shape of it looks really similar, I think, to the Avid Seamstress, the blouse pattern. Maybe like a little bit looser than the fit of that, but I guess you could always size up. Um, but it's got a ruffle added at the collar and then it looks like maybe it's got a sort of like a like a, um, some kind of frill or something at the bottom sleeve, which you could definitely do something with the scalloped edge on there. Um, so, so yeah, you know, if you want to recreate that look, here you go. But in terms of the of the beach cover up, I did see a few Tessuti patterns, which I think might be quite nice for this. The Connie, C-O-N-I, or the Tosca tunic, T-O-S-C-A, both Tessuti patterns. And they looked more just like quite like very loose sort of just kind of big loose dresses that you would kind of just chuck on and they would sort of be quite loose and move around a lot. And I think that would look nice in this. Um, so, so yeah. I hope that is inspiring. Okay, the next one was fabric for a saguaro set. That's the Friday Passion Company little set with the elasticated trousers and then the sort of um, a sort of grown on sleeve and the elasticated top there. So the viscose linen I was talking about, um, where's it gone? I brought one of the colours over. This is it here. Um, so this is this is the ocean colourway, 75 viscose, 25 linen. So I made a saguaro set out of this fabric. I did um, like a light blue and then a navy for the bottom last summer and I really liked it. So it does work really nicely in this. I have also seen nice versions in double gauze as well of the saguaro set. Um, so yeah, you could go for double gauze like that one I showed earlier. Um, or you could also go for just a like a woven viscose as well. This is a really nice one, which is a viscose twill, so it feels a little bit heavier. That twill weave makes it feel a little bit heavier. Um, this has actually got a bit of tensile in it as well.
well. It's the Fiber Mood Shibori Effect Viscose Tensile, 70 Viscose, 30 Tensile, it's 21, 20 a meter. And that, is, that would work really nicely for a saguaro set as well. Also, Naomi, um, who who works here, actually, sadly, she's um, now left because <laughs> she's got she's got her exams at uni, but she made um, the saguaro top out of this actual colorway. Um, and that worked really nicely, nicely as well. So it does work in just like woven viscose fabric too. Um, do you have any fabric in stock that you have made the Sasha trousers in? Um, I don't, I don't think I do. I haven't made the sashes for ages. Um, and the ones that I wear quite regularly are actually both um, Liberty prints when we had some Liberty like stretch gabardine in. Um, so sorry, I don't. Um, Helen. Okay, recommendations for men's shorts pattern with a side pocket and elastic waist or drawstring. Oh, I wouldn't know that one off the top of my head. But definitely, if you've got quite specific features you want, you've got something pictured in your head, I would suggest going on to the fold line pattern database and filtering it for men's and shorts. And it'll show you lots of different options. And I think you'll find something. Um, I made the saguaro set in double gauze. It looks great and it's really comfortable. Lovely. Um, okay, the ne the last few, yeah, we've still got time. Um, fabric for the True Bias Riley dress. This is the new True Bias pattern. We don't have it in stock yet because it's not filtered through this, this, the systems um, so that we've got the paper copy yet. Um, but we will have it when it, you know, when it becomes available. It looks really nice though. Um, it's quite summery. So you can have like sort of thinner straps and then it's kind of got more like fitted cups, some like seam under here with gathers and buttons down the front, or you can have a version with sleeves as well. That's my favorite one. Um, and I think it would look really nice and just a, a, a woven viscose. I pulled out this one here. This is the one that was floppy earlier and falling down. This also does come in a black colourway as well, which is really nice. Floral stamp on claret. It's actually a stretch viscose, but you just treat, treat it as a woven. Um, but I think that would look really nice and it would look nice in the Be Happy Blooms one as well. Um, so, so yeah, a nice woven viscose would be good there. Um, the next one was a dartless woven top to use with the scalloped edge cotton. That was the one I was showing before. Um, I'm wondering I'm wondering about the specification of it being dartless. You can put darts in a fabric like that. So if you were worried about putting darts in, don't worry too much because you can put darts in that kind of fabric. Um, the Paper Theory Block Tee, the Friday Pattern Company Donny that I was talking about in the beginning, also an option. Or if you want to border into the, the darts, the Closet Core Celio is good. Oh, somebody's listening to loud music outside. Did you hear that? Um, okay, the next one is pattern and fabric for a pair of elasticated waist wide leg trousers for summer. So definitely the saguaro is really nice. It's elasticated waist, nice wide leg. Um, so that is an option. Um, or the True Bias Emerson's another popular one. It's just elasticated at the back. So it's like a bit more sort of flatter and, fit and fitted, I guess, at the front. It's got little sort of pleats as well. Um, and th so the Emerson look really good in our enzyme linen fabric or the Rami fabric. So that could be an option. Um, the Saguaro, as I said, the viscose linen is really good for that. Um, or you could go... Uh, you could go stretch as well. So the Made by Ray Luna pants, you could you could go for that in a, in a plain, te we've got a really nice range of lighter weight tensile jerseys that are plain and they would work really nicely with that pattern. So that's a stretch option if you wanted that. Um, okay, the next one, what's being asked here? Um, what fabric would you recommend for the Megan Nielsen flint shorts? That works really nicely in either our enzyme linen or a Rami fabric because um, both have got a little bit more structure, which I think looks nice in the flint shorts. Does the fringe dress come up big by chalk and notch? I wouldn't say particularly, no. You do pull it on and off over your head, so it has to have enough ease in the waist for you to be able to do that. Um, so therefore, you know, it's not totally fitted at the waist because you need to be able to pull it on and off. Um, but if you did want it to be a, like have a little bit more definition, you could easily just add in a waist tie to sort of pull it in. So you're pulling it on over your head, but just then giving more waist definition with the waist tie. OK, next I've got here. Can you show the white sunflower embroidered border cotton fabric? 
so this is it here i do also have it in green as well and um, i feel like this is quite similar to the the kate um blouse also um it's really nice it's got a lovely little embroidered border too um, I think that was all the question was. I'm not sure if you, you just wanted to sort of see what it was like. That's the kind of scale of the flowers. It's really pretty. Um, which is softer to the touch, Rami or Enzyme Linen? I'd, pr I'd probably say, I'd probably say the Enzyme Linen. Um, and then yeah, also comes in the green as well. Um, and then actually I was also going to show you this, which is I feel like it's quite in a sort of similar vein to that sunflower one, but it's not floral. This is actually a double gauze, and then it's got a really nice sort of zigzag stripe on it, which is also the, the border as well, like that's the selvage. And I think that's really pretty too. You could also alternate some of the direction of the stripes, have some that way, have some that way. That's lovely. Um, I do have some of that in navy as well. It's the, let me tell you the name, off-white zigzag embroidered cotton double gauze fabric, 21.50 a meter. Um, and then the last couple where I have some of your vintage floral sprig navy viscose, is this too thick for a jumpsuit? Like the sew over at Camille, no, at the, which is a, in the, the work to weekend ebook. I think that would, I think it would look good to have a quick look at that pattern. I think that combination would be fine. And then the last one was fabric for the Elford jacket. So when we did the Elford jacket as a kit, we used this range here, not this specific color, but this range of fabric. This is the Rose Cotton 12 fabric. It's 100% cotton, it's 14.50 a meter and it comes in lots of colors. So this makes a really nice sort of nice like spring summery lightweight um, version of the Elford. So that is, that is a nice option. Um, and then the other option that I thought would also work nicely as well, I've not got as many colors. This one is the Bedford Cord. Um, which comes in navy and um, a sort of khaki greeny colour and then a kind of, I can't remember what how we described it, a tan I think it's called. So it's not, it's not corduroy but it has like a sort of corduroy effect but it's not got a nap. Um, so that is also really nice or you could actually use corduroy as well, the Atelier Brunette corduroys would be really nice for the Alford too. But then on the other end of the spectrum, I have even seen people use um, like vi just viscose to make the Elford. And then obviously it's more of like an actual shirt as opposed to a jacket. So yeah, if you wanted to wear it as a jacket, then that 12, the Bedford cord or the corduroy, I think are all really nice options. Um, thank you for asking my question about the Sovereign jumpsuit, no probs. Are you going to be getting any of the latest Atelier brunette fabric? Yes, I ordered that last week. So that is on the way. Um, gosh, those white embroidered fabrics, I know they're really nice. Um, okay, I think I've caught up with all the questions there. So if anybody's got any last minute questions, let me know now. Um, but managed to get everything in <laughs> that last hour. So remember, there isn't, as I said in the beginning, if you missed the very beginning, there isn't a brand new kit for May coming out. Um, but I will still send a newsletter on Wednesday at, at midday just to give you a little high in an update. Um, because yeah, it just feels a bit like routine that I would want to sort of chat to you on the first Wednesday of every month. Um, and, and yeah, I think that's about it really. Um, another bank holiday next weekend, but I'll still be here to chat to you on Monday night. So again, I'll put the little question box up on Saturday. So you can send me any questions there or you can send me them beforehand. I try and sort of flag them. Um, so that I can add them to my list. Um, so if you think of a question anytime, feel free to message me. I'll try and keep track of them. Um, but thanks so much for watching everyone. Remember, I will be putting it onto my YouTube channel. Um, hopefully at some point tomorrow, my internet's really slow though. It takes ages to upload the video because it's like an hour long. Um, but yeah, it will be on YouTube eventually with all the timestamp chapters of what questions I've, I've answered. So you can always skip to that or sort of scan through and see what see what I've answered. Um, but thanks for your thanks, everyone. I hope you enjoy the rest of your evening and enjoy your weekend. Um, and thanks for still chatting on a bank holiday. No probs. Um, yeah, have a good week, everyone, and I'll see you soon. Bye.